cut away gloriously through point for four. What a shot. A shot of length is going away from the bat and he just whacked through points and covers. Absolute, look at that shot. This is shot going away perfectly on it. You see the sideways, perfectly timed. Bang, it goes. Important thing to note here, he's playing it off the front foot. He has enough time to see the ball and punch it through the offside. Dulka again on strike. Again, he's been given the width, and the result is the same. He's found the gap on the offside. And again, goes into the fence for four. So good over this for India. Yeah, that's not sensible bowling from Vakar because he knows that Sachin is absolutely brilliant off the back foot. Mind you, he's he was still look at that shot again. This hammers that and perfectly placed between the cover and point. Much better footwork from Tendulkar today, at least at the start of the innings. Saw him yesterday being a little cramped in his footwork, but today he seems to be moving a lot better. Quick to get onto that front foot, but then once he sees anything short, he's quick to move that back foot too. Well, Ravi, I think that was bad bowling because uh, uh, Bakar is giving him room. Yesterday he was bowling up to him, bringing the ball into him, but today he's bowling short and outside. We were talking about into the right hander. Again, punched away through the offside by Tendulka for yet another boundary. Again, the short one in Tendulka hammers it through the covers. What a magnificent shot! Anything loose is not going to spare. So, the Pakistani bowlers have got to be careful. Look at that forward and back foot and there it goes he's got so much time that he goes forward then comes back foot and hammers it through the covers what a magnificent shot and that was an action replay of his uh, previous two boundaries in exactly the same area and he's already scoring at uh, more than a runner ball oh that's a beauty this is a terrific delivery from Azhar Mahmood. He's bowled from the edge of the crease. And it's a perfect leg cutter. That's what Wazi would like to see from him. Look at that ball. Good length, comes in and moves away off the wicket. That's what he should do, especially against a class batsman like Sachin. And that's what Wazi would want from him. A little bit of wet there. Azar Mahmood coming from the Wilson Avenue end. Chance at mid on. Wazi Makram has got him. And what a blow the young man has struck for his team. A much needed one. Yes, I think uh, that ball was up there for driving that probably just stopped a little bit. We saw yesterday that there are one or two bare patches. And if the ball hits them, it, it just powders and stops on the batsman. Nicely pitched up, right in the slot for driving. Yeah, I think that just didn't quite come on to him, and it was an easy catch for uh, the Pakistani captain at mid on. Big wicket for Pakistan, that. India 32 for one. is on strike now coming in at number three he was quite impressive yesterday after uh, a slow start played a couple of lovely pull shots to post a big score now it's up to the other batsman Mongi is hold out mid on so Wazi Makram is the ace catcher in the Pakistan side well not too difficult to catch at mid on but he caught it nicely what was important that Azza Mahmood pitch the ball up and if you pitch the ball up here fairly straight you're going to create problems for the batsman Mongia trying to slug him over midwicket I don't think you could describe that in any other way just going to whack it anywhere he could get the bat on it and India now 44 for two personally I think he should be batting at three for India but that's uh, 
that's his spot. That's the one that he likes. And I guess that uh, is important for the batsman. He's got to be comfortable in a spot to bat well there. Just a touch for He's talking about how that's India need to post a big total and to do that's well without getting a contribution from Sachin Tendulkar. This is the man who's got to make a big score for India if they're going to do that. He's a fine player. His form has been down a little in the last 12 months. There were signs in Colombo that he was coming back to his best. He's got a good opportunity now with Mongia back in the pavilion. His record or his average is down quite a bit against Pakistan. He'd like to boost that. Beautifully bowled. 44 for two. It's Wakar Yunus to continue to Mohammad Azaruddin. They were nicely on the onside. Again, he's such a good timer of the ball when he plays in that area. And no problems here in the ball reaching the fence. Didn't try and hit it too hard, but leaned into it nicely. And once it hit the bat, the score runs for the taking. They left that area open in the previous over when Vakar was bowling to uh, Azar Amir Sohail. Was it mid wicket? And Ravi is going there now. Nice juicy half volley on his leg stump. He's not one to miss out on that. Very strong on the onside. Oh, that's brilliantly struck. Four more to Azruddin. 59 for two after 15 overs. quite easily and uh, Azhar falls 12 shot of 100 this is the wicket that Pakistan were looking for Azhar gone for 88 it is 205 now for three so we see as it comes down the wicket very well planned to hit it right over mid on for a six but but he just mistimed it and Azar Mahmood took a very good catch. India, 2 of 5 for 3 in 42 overs. Kamli is a new batsman in. It's really up to him now to get this momentum going. He's coming in the fall of Azaruddin's wicket. There he goes. Well, I give full credit to Azar for this. Uh, instead of going for 100, he went for to score big runs for his team. Changed his mind just a bit, yeah, I thought, with that shot. He's just a... Uh, he's 10 matches, 181, 25.9. Best 56. Not bad at all. And yet, uh, Mohsin, just a bit of a contrast. Upwards of 40, which is probably brilliant by one-day standards. He'd want to do a little better against Pakistan to try and uh, level, uh, level things up a bit. Yeah, but um, mind you, Asha, he's got only 10 matches he's played against Pakistan. staying and now he's going lovely catch just what the doctor ordered for Pakistan oh, what a marvelous catch by Amir Suhail absolutely brilliant I mean these are the things which Pakistan really need to come back in the game otherwise uh, like I said there it is oh we haven't got a clear vision but still beautifully taken diving forward and rolling sideways 214 for four. Ajay Jadija, the next batsman he's in because India have just lost another wicket, that of uh, Vinod Kambli. Just a shade away. Jadija. Big stump. There it is. Off he goes. Time over four to come. And he takes it there. I think that's a clean catch, yeah. Very good decision by the umpire, I must say. And a beautiful catch taken. in front of the stumps if you stand up over the stumps as the bowler oh, that's well bowled that's the top spinner he bowls that extremely well 
Well, he did uh, Raul drive it in the flight. Beautifully bowled. Try to get down the pitch to him. And this is a batsman who's played splendidly today. He's worked the ball around very well as Raul Dravid. He's beaten in the flight. The batsman trying to use his feet. Well, that's a lovely view. And a little bit of skill there from the off spinner. But a wonderful innings by Raul Dravid. 90, 245 for five. Jabagal uh, Srinath has been sent in. He's a very good hitter of the cricket ball. And he's the sort of player who can clear the boundary once or twice in these last few deliveries. He'll be facing the off spinner. And he's gone. Bozzy Macram has, uh, has been presented with three catches now. That's the simplest of them. Well, Srinath didn't really uh, have a look at the bowling at all. He'd just come in to do uh, one thing, one purpose only. Whack it to the boundary. A big spin ball outside off stump, trying to hit with the turn. It seemed to me as if he got it low down on the bat. He didn't go that hard to Wasim Akram. A simple catch. One ball, out for naught. 245 for six. Well, this is a terrible time for a frontline yeah, batsman to come in, but that's the job facing Saurav Ganguly. It's been pushed down the order because uh, they've promoted some of the hitters. It didn't work in the case of uh, Srinath because he holed out from the bowling of Sarklane. And Sarklane now will be bowling to the left-hander. He's actually coming over the wicket. Ganguly's great strength is through the offside. And he plays spin bowling quite well. Dan Gurley off the mark immediately with a well-timed shot. In Toronto with two good innings. And India posting a very, very competitive total. Something around uh, 265, 270. And it's going to take a lot of getting. Well, you expect all sorts of uh, shots in the last over. here for Saeed Anwar. Plenty of height, but he's not able to get there. In fact, I don't think uh, Saeed Anwar picked it up off the bat, otherwise he would have got there easily. Yes, I agree with that, Ian. It went up a long way. There was quite a bit of time, and I think he's damaged his hand. I hope it's not serious, but he's certainly running towards the captain umpire. This ball went up. He got under it. He hit it nicely, but he got too far under it. It went up a long way. Look, it's real steeplejack, is that? He only had to run about 25 yards, but he was struggling at the end to get there. Well, he must have lost it from the hit. And in the end, you see, he was never really comfortable. He was outstretched. It was low. Well, it looks as if it's the end of his finger, which is... Uh, I wouldn't say it's a good thing, but it's, it's not the webbing, I hope, which uh, would put him out of the game in the next few Sahara Cup games. Very well bowled. He almost delayed that delivery just to see where Ganguly was going. It was very clever bowling. Yes, you could sense that uh, the left-hander Ganguly was trying to get to the leg side, trying to shuffle to leg side. Watch him there. He threatens to come. Then he's staying leg side. Beautifully bowled by the youngster. And again, out thought Ganguly. That's clever bowling. He did well there. Well, we're certainly in for a bright afternoon weather-wise. The sun has come out. There's still a bit of wind around, but uh, 
It was quite amazing yesterday how the outfield firmed up and hopefully under a bit of sunshine it'll improve even more today. Saeed Anwar is on strike for Pakistan. He's not uh, generally tied down for too long. He would, uh, as I mentioned yesterday, have to rate up there with Joe Sarir as one of the most dangerous openers in one day international cricket. His partner's no slouch. That's the record of Saeed Anwar. Eight hundreds. And that's when he's at his best. When he gets the ball up there that brings the batsman forward, particularly bowling to left-handers because he's angling towards the slips. Amir Sahail, the vice-captain of Pakistan. So captain Pakistan on a few occasions. His record not quite as good as his partners. Anwar off the mark. Well, Ian, uh, look at that fielding by Jadeja. He definitely saved about a couple of runs there. Look at that diving left-hand stop. And the asking rate was 5.3 at the start of the innings. Prasad just getting a little bit uh, onto the leg stump, and that's where Saeed Anwar is extremely strong. Very risky player. Yeah, yeah, and they both are very talented players, and uh, they can work the ball around. There we see. Off his legs, perfectly placed between short fine leg and deep square leg for a couple. And uh, if these two can stay out there for about, for a good margin of part, and let's say down about 100 runs, they can really do it in a very quick time, and that will bring Pakistan back into the game. That was a bad delivery, and it's been punished. Six. Well, as Ian said, bad delivery, short, pulled, straight out of the ground. I can remember these two uh, batsmen going out to open in the World Cup against India in Bangalore. And my word, what a game they played. We all are the fans of Jay Surya and Kalu Vithidna. And I tell you what, these two batsmen showed that they are probably one of the best opening pairs in the world as far as test cricket is concerned or one day cricket is concerned. Pakistan needs here is to just keep their head cool because these two players they are basically stroke makers they can always pick up uh, what do we need an over uh, in uh, for 5.3 which is I think with the batting line lineup of Pakistan it's very much gettable it's not going to be easy not going to be easy at all because Indians will be right on them but I think if they bat sensibly like Azhar and Dravid did they can get it He just walks. That's an excellent catch. What a catch. Just got the inside edge down the leg side. There it is. Very slight edge. Not an easy catch. Full stretch diving catch by Mongia. Absolutely marvelous. This, this is the difference which is going to make. 10 for 1. 1 1.5. Jazz Ahmed is the number three batsman for Pakistan, played very intelligently yesterday. And uh, obviously the news has got around that there's 
a pretty exciting contest in prospect. And that's how Amir Sahail lost his wicket. And the players of India and Pakistan enjoying a bit of sun on their back at the moment. Start to continue. Beautifully timed. Well, shot Ian, perfectly timed off his pads. Right on the ground. There it is. Roll of the wrist. Side angle to you. Roll of the wrist. Perfectly placed. No chance for the fielder squarely to stop the ball. Races to the boundary. Beautiful shot. has played very intelligently yesterday. Pakistan now need to develop a partnership as India did. Well, that wasn't so uh, intelligent. That was a bit wild, that shot. Yeah, Ian, that's exactly what Pakistan doesn't need because Ajaz, Anwar, Inzimam, they're all stroke, stroke makers. They don't need to slot. They just have to play according to the merit of the ball. And like Srinath and Prasad, they're two good bowlers. They have to give respect to them and play according to the need. Five and over, reachable. That's an excellent delivery. It's going to cost the bowler four. That's reminiscent of some of the uh, leg cutters that uh, Mahmood produced earlier in the day. What a delivery. Love the out cutter. Look at that. Ijaz was very lucky to get a thick edge on it, otherwise it could have been straight to the first left fielder. Avi Shastri now moving into the commentary position. Swung away on the onside, by side onward. This will go all the way to the fence. Long chase for Vinod Kamli, but he won't get it. Short delivery from Srinath and Anwar quickly into position, not quite getting hold of it, but getting enough bat on it to help the ball to the fence. Well, Saeed Anwar is a great player of short pitch deliveries on and off ball. Look at that pull. He's a very good puller and a very good square cutter. Look at that. Perfectly timed. He just waits for this ball. Superb shot. That's, that's what uh, Saeed Anwar and Nijaj should do. Wait for the loose ball, hit that to the boundary, otherwise play safe. Driven this time on the offside. He'll have to hurry for a single, but a misfield there from Tendulka will give the batsman the second run. Well, that's very unlike Tandulka, but uh, it always happens to any, it can happen to anybody. Uh, Mr. Je Jeffrey Boyka is here. Should we not continue again to the left handed onward? shot he's timed this magnificently way over square leg and out of the ground for six terrific shot this from under well you're going to be crazy to be bouncing a batsman on this pitch it's so slow it sits up and begs to be whacked and he's bowling this string after one of the great players in the world who's in top form really was a glorious shot and it's gone a long way over square leg so what's Srinath going to do now this is already an expensive over loud shout for leg before but may have just pitched outside leg stump have to wait for the empire signal it's a leg by signal there Well, it's hard to get an LBW bowling over the wicket to left-handers unless you pitch on and bring the ball back into them. This one pitching around leg like stump. Very difficult to say that that pitched on. In fact, it looks as if it's pitched just outside. But most umpires will give any benefit of the doubt to the batsman. Right arm over to the left-hander. Away by Ijaz for a single, so this is a good over for Pakistan. 
obviously have decided that when the ball is new and hard and it's coming onto the bat, they're going to try and uh, score as many runs as possible. And that's another look at that six from Anwar. Terrific shot. It really was a glorious piece of timing. Still a lot of cricket left in this game. And you have got a big score. Pakistan have a very strong batting lineup. and again brilliantly taken by Nayan Mongia. Much better line from Venkatesh Prasad, finding the outside edge and Pakistan lose their second wicket. Well that ball was an absolute beauty, it was right in the corridor, which I think all batsmen have difficulty with, often middle to about four inches outside, on a fairly goodish length, you've got to play at them, and if the ball moves at all, as this one just did a touch, just held its line. A little edge, and a nice diving catch. Well caught by the keeper, low to his right. He wouldn't have carried the first slip. That's a big blow again for uh, Pakistan, 44 for two. Because Pakistan have lost one wicket too many at this stage. Inzamam Ulhaq comes out to the middle. Big responsibility on his broad shoulders. And the reason why he's here is because of this. Now watch where the wicketkeeper, Naya Mongia. Caught. It's very low in front of slip. That's all that. Srinath to continue. And driven by Anwar beautifully through the covers for four. In fact, played it so late, square drove that. But yet another boundary. Does look in magnificent touch. Well, well, we're enjoying that cover drive for Saeed Anwar. Let's just have a look at the wicket again. Lovely line and length, and it just carries to the keeper. That wouldn't have carried to first slip. Would have been at least two yards short of him. Now, it was interesting, after the wicket keeper caught that, and all the players joined in the celebrations, Sachin Tendulkar, with a smart cricket brain, went and told both slips to come forward at least a yard. And shows that he's still thinking about the next batsman or the next wicket to come. Looking to drive again, just leaving him late. Well, there's even a nod of approval from the batsman. We're talking about pitching the ball up. It's up there. Anwar thinks it's in the slot to hit. It's much harder if you pitch it up. Great delivery, this from Srinath Bolt from the edge of the crease. And uh, just leaving the batsman late. So Jadeja bowling to a predominantly offside field. He's got a man in at slip and uh, four on the wing on the offside. And Saeed Anwar has found the gap. Beautifully trying through the covers, just lent into it. Didn't try and hit it too hard. Four runs the moment it left the bat. Well, a lot of people in the crowd come to see fours and sixes in one day cricket. But I don't care what kind of cricket you're watching, that's an elegant shot. Perfectly played, straight back, high front elbow, foot to the pitch of the ball, a little bit inside out. Well played. That was deliberately played. He was looking to hit the ball that was a bit wide of the stump, slash it wide, square on the offside, and the ball jumped on him a bit. And just at the last minute, he steered it in the air. He's just going to hit it, and then he sees it bounce, and steers it over the top of the gully area. And he's raced away to 47. Only 36 balls. Well, there are plenty of gaps for Saeed Anwar on the leg side, with the ball spinning back into him. So if he could play it with the spin on the onside, it's virtually one man saving a single. And swept away fine and for four. Nice way to bring up his 50. It's been an explosive innings from the left-hander. Well, he's a terrific player. He showed us yesterday that he could bat well. Today, I think he's playing even better. He seems to have a range of shots too many people in the world have. Certainly Pakistan's answer to Jaya Saria of uh, Sri Lanka. Oh. 
shot and pulled away over square leg for yet another six. Really did pick up that short ball quickly. 12 overs gone, Pakistan 77 for two. Jadeja. Oh! So I think Pakistan needed that uh, little single to be taken because India seemed quite content to have in Zimam on the strike. Only two runs had come from the earlier two uh, overs. Yeah, there it is. Well, in Zimam, like I said, just walked in and the ball definitely is swinging a little bit. Jadeja being not one of the likely bowlers for the batsman because he's slow in pace and uh, sometimes even he doesn't know what he's bowling, so which is very deceptive for the batsman. And on the other hand, Joshi is there. So for in Zimam, for a right-hander, it's a bit difficult to start with. He should just try to stay on, settle down, and play, play a secondary role to Saeed Anwar at the moment. We're looking for two here. Uh, to be satisfied with one in Zamam, mildly ponderous between the wickets. It's always a bit tense when you're running a second with uh, in Zamam. You're right, Arsha. He's uh, not one of the most popular runners in the Pakistan team. But I'll tell you, once in Zaman gets going, tends to make up for all the singles that he might have let go. No one there to cut it off. <laughs> Janija knows it's something he shouldn't have done. Well, yeah, I mean, this is a kind of ball, which is a bowler who was very unlucky because he tickled it very, there it is, very slight tickle, and very fine it goes to the boundary line, which is a very, very useful run, and it will give Inzimam a lot of confidence if he gets a few off boundaries like this. Third was a shot that was asking to be hit. Inzimam said, I've held myself back for too long, and he's hit it into the stands. What a great shot, Asha. Inzimam. Just said to himself, look, pal, you have put enough pressure. There it is, dancing down the wicket, middling it perfectly over Midoff, right into the stands, right into the stands for a six. And just a single yeah, but this is a this is a fascinating contest, isn't it? Tendulkar is telling Inzamam, look, I don't think you're up to it. And Inzamam is saying, I don't like those two closing fielders around. Fantastic tactical battle this. That's not in Toronto anymore. Goodness gracious me. That was some shot, man. Down again. Off you go. Off you go, all the way. Over the screen, my word. I hope it didn't get stuck in the tree there. Eh? I'll tell you where that one was going. That tree was in some danger. This has to be one of the most amazing blows you will ever see. What a shot. One of the best shots of the match. Oh, it's, it's gone in the garden. My God. Just you... about and 25 cases of wild behind it. But anyway, they've got it now. I wonder if Vinod Kamli was offered a cup of tea as he dropped by there. There's a lovely little lawn there. A few more blows like that from Inzamam. We can have a second-hand balls counter set up over there. Interesting, we were at the uh, Sky Dome yesterday, and uh, hits like those, they go into the crowd, you're allowed to keep the ball. Yeah! Big shout. I knew Kumble thought there was something there. So did the close infielder, Lloyd Barker didn't. Well, that is more of an excitement from the Indians than it was anything close to it. It was just off the pad. Kumble appealed for the leg before first, then they went for the bat pad. Which is fair enough. Well, that, uh, hmm. Debatable. Oh. Our leading edge, he does get that ball to turn occasionally, to she? Well, what I like about Sachin's policy is that in his, he had a very decent target of 263. Instead of defending, he's attacking. And he knows that if he gets a couple of quick wicket, wickets, he's going to go through this game. Dropped. There could be a run out over here. 
but Inzamam gets back, so just about everything happened in that one ball. Azruddin, the man there at uh, slip, that ball is flying off the outside edge. Look at that. Oh, he gets an edge. Azar drops it. And to rub it in, Said Anwar then goes across to the other and then smashes him for four. Exactly, you're right, Asher. That's so unlucky for Joshi that he gets struck in Zaman through Azar and then they expose Said Anwar comes dancing down the wicket and puts him over his head for a boundary. Look at that. Perfectly timed middle shot. Right out of the meat of the bat. Yeah! Oops! I saw two sounds. I heard two sounds in the mound box. Lloyd Barker didn't need to be called into action. He's caught there at silly point. Drop it, the catcher. And this is the wicket India desperately wanted. In the mound is gone. It's 115 for three. And uh, Mosin Anil Kumle has uh, struck for India. There it is. Inzamam goes forward, inside edge, onto the pad, and straight. A very well taken, beautifully taken catch by, is it, uh, yeah, David. David, very good catch. Like I said, this, this field of Sachin, it paid him. So Pakistan lose their third wicket. Inzamam gone for 29, it's 115 for three. <laughs> Salim Malik is the new man in, and he's in because... Rahul Dravid took a wonderful catch to dismiss in Zamam ul -Haq. One thirty-eight for three Pakistan at the end of that over as compared to 116 for two what the Indians were at that stage as Srinath continues to Malik. Cut away on the offside, back for the point, big chase there for Kamli. Big attempt there from him in vain as the ball crosses over the fence. It's still pretty damp there in the outfield. I guess also that gives the fieldsman a bit of a problem when he's diving because it is so damp. Never quite sure where to start your dive. On that occasion, uh, Denord Campbell had absolutely no chance. The ball bounced over his hand. Tindulka continues. And he'll be bowling to the left-handed onward. That's it. And that's pulled away straight to the man at square leg. And the Indian captain has got the breakthrough India wanted. Just what Pakistan didn't want at this stage. They lost the wicket for side onward. Yes, he hit it extremely well. But he hit it near a man who's exceptionally good in the outfield. We've seen uh, Sunil Joshi do some very good things in the outfield, both catching and on the ground. And that was well taken. He picked it up off the bat immediately, and he was in quickly. Now, it looks a fairly simple catch there, but he made it into a simple catch by his judgment. It's 144 for four. Moin Khan, the new man out there in the middle. The Indians picking up that wicket just in the nick of time. Said Anwar was looking dangerous. Yes, Said Anwar getting a shortest delivery, which he timed extremely well. The problem he had was he hit it straight to the man in the deep. Sunil Joshi, who made no mistake. Square driven and he'll get his first runs here. Could go all the way to the fence. A long chase for the Sunil Joshi, a third man. And the ball just crossing over the line. Tried to put his foot out there, the ball going over it. And Moin Khan gets his first boundary. Problem for the fielder here is he knows that the boundary boards are coming up quickly. And uh, you start to think about your safety as well as trying to stop the ball. And you probably just take your eye off the ball a fraction wanting to not run into the boundary boards. The ball snuck past the boot. It's wonderfully played by Salim Malik. They pick up two here. Just got a feeling that uh, 
Tendulkar was going to hold Anil Kumble back a little longer. He probably just senses another wicket here. He's trying to squeeze a couple of overs more out of him here. 150 comes up for Pakistan. Well, though, uh, we need 115 to win 123 ball. That's okay. Wickets. Oh, dear, oh, dear. That nearly was a wicket. That kept low on Salim Malik. He couldn't do much about that. Just fortunate it wasn't straight. I don't think you could say that it was skill from the bowler. It just died on the batsman. Look, going between the wicketkeeper's legs, hardly bouncing 12 inches. I know Kumla's expression saying it all there. Almost played on again. <laughs> no justice, uh, Kumble would like to believe. Well, he's trying to get play against the top spinner running in. He's trying to open the face and run it, keeping his hands quite relaxed, but the ball's bouncing back once your hands are relaxed. So I don't think a, a hundred to get is, is as important psychologically. He's getting past that 200 mark. You feel then you're on the downward uh, side of the the mountain you know getting 265 is a hell of a lot of runs to get over to 200 then you can start to count down to the to the target We've still got quite a bit of work to do off Pakistan still got two catches it's in the air he's gonna be caught Mohingan waited for the signal Amba Orchard says you're out and uh, that's a wicket Pakistan didn't want to lose. Sunil Joshi picks up a wicket with his first ball of the new spell. Well, the change of bowling did the trick. I don't think you'll convince uh, Mohin Khan. He seemed to indicate that he came off his arm, uh, but he seemed to be the only one. I reckon that ran up the glove right up the arm. You see here on the spin vision very carefully. Watch it. Yeah. I reckon that ran up the glove. Yeah, might have been a top edge and the glove, but up it went. But I don't think there's any doubt he was out. For 14, 169 for five. Well, Vasi Makram is the new man in, the last really of the recognized batsmen. Pakistan has a big job on their hands here because they've lost the wicket of Moin Khan, and that's how it happened. I watch it very carefully from this close up. He gets down to sweep and it looks and we slow it right down as if it's just gonna run up the edge of the bat. Glove, you can see it bounce off the glove quite clearly there. Over the top. And a very simple catch by Azarudin. It'll be interesting to see how uh, Pakistan played from here. They really cannot afford to lose another wicket. But they cannot afford to let that asking rate go up either. Average 14.9. Ah, he decided what he's going to do. You can't keep Vasi Makram quiet. That's six. Wasn't that a magnificent shot, really? I mean, that was an orthodox cricket shot. I've seen him play all sorts of slogs and hits, cross bat shot. But that's as good a cricket shot as any top class batsman. Lovely use of the feet down the pitch. Just hit it straight. Didn't try to hit it too hard, and it still went for six. Job done, and now play the orthodox offensive shot. I was just about to say that they might as well think positively because there's nothing for draws. You know, you've just got to win. How often have we seen this? We see Makram just coming in and smashing and rolling around. Required run rate 5.51 at this stage. Important to leave it there. 89 from uh, 97 balls. Now oh, that equation is going to look even better. That is a top shot from Salim Malik. 11 from the over. Throwing a wicket, it's 180 for five. Ozzy Makram 
has already hit one six. Before him, Said Anwar hit three sixes. One of them bouncing uh, just short of the club window. You see there the little red mark on the white wall. Just, just there is uh, the little red mark. I don't think the gentleman was sitting there when the ball went past. Umpire Orchard says no. There's a huge appeal from uh, all of the Indians. Well, let's have a look at this. Yeah. Well, didn't look out. There was no sound there. Oh, but. Uh, Well, I think we should try and look at uh, that incident once again. Yeah. Oh, there is a sound. But, like I said yesterday, uh, Sachin survived a very plum LBW appeal. So did Bussy. That's a good shot. Beautifully played. That brings up the 200 for Pakistan. Trouble if he hits, but he doesn't pick the ball up, and Prasad is annoyed. 205 for five. the fielding uh, hasn't been as good today from India they were absolutely brilliant in the field yesterday athletic and sure-handed but today there's been a few fumbles now that ball swung quite late Be interesting to see what he gives here four wide so it's an extra delivery that's handy for Pakistan. You're right, Ian. The Ian, Indians' fielding is not up to the mark as it was yesterday. The fielding in patches, they start one good ball, then the next one is a fumble. And this one wide down the lake side, there it is. And the keeper is not able to hold it. And Pakistan get four bonus runs with one extra ball. Chance of third man. And so Tendulkar's move has paid off. Yes, you're right, Ian. He keeps on changing his bowlers, his field placements. He's all the time attacking the Pakistani batsman. Wasim Akram middle that ball. He just whacks it over Gali, and there is a deep third man, wider, where he takes a very comfortable catch. Well, well played innings, but uh, Pakistan 213 for six. Azam Mahmood, who bowled uh, pretty well in the Indian innings, is uh, regarded by the Pakistanis as something of an all-rounder. That theory is going to be tested out now. That's well played. Pushed it into the gap. Well, they're asking for the replay. India think that they've got him. Oh, what a lovely piece of building. Straight hit to the stumps, and uh, Indian seems that they've got him, but uh, I have doubts for that. But we have to see the replay to exactly find out. It was a lovely piece of feeling. It was Jadeja, the danger man. It's going to be tight, very tight. I think he's gone. He's gone. Yes, I think the red light is going to be on very soon. There it is. That was absolutely marvellous fielding by Jadeja. And uh, that puts the pressure again on the Pakistanis. 
Well, well, well. Suddenly, Malik and uh, Wasim started creaming it. And then Wasim got out and then this run out. Uh, yes, he's out. Two miles, at least six inches out. 2.15 for seven, Pakistan. And on strike will be the new batsman, Mushtaq Ahmed. That could well be a wide. Salim Malik is appealing for a wide. Empire Orchard checks with uh, Lloyd Barker at square leg. Lloyd says no. Oh, that's a bit funny, Ian. It was clearly a wide. But anyway, then again, the umpire's out there. They, they see over his shoulder. Definitely a wide for a no ball. No, he won't. I don't know what Srinath is trying to do. Instead of pitching it up, up to the bat, I think he can, he can try and get him out because there's a tail ender. On, on top of that, he's just come in and he's digging in short to him. And got on straight back to the bowler. So Mushtaq has perished. And in the process, Salim Malik is being frustrated. Well, Rising and uh, Mustard just pushed it back to the bowler, a gentle cotton ball. See now, there's pretty good in catching those. Oh. Uh, I think he could have just blocked that ball and tried to take a single. But he, there he pushes it straight back to Srinath. Srinath looking at the ball right from the word go, taking nice, making it nice and easy. 22, 2.21 for it. Sakhlein Mushtaq comes to the crease. I think that Salim Malik would have said to him now, your job is to make sure that I get as much strike as possible. swinging and missing just played that ball very carefully the first ball he's in is trying to drive that ball he could have been out easily caught behind swings it away square of the wicket on the offside and finds the gap a welcome boundary that for pakistan well that was a lovely wristy shot wasn't it we expected that to be hit through the covers but hitting it late turning the wrist at the moment of impact Gonna take a tremendous effort if Pakistan are gonna get there. They can't afford any mistakes. Certainly not from this man. He'll be there right till the end. Slower delivery flicked away on the onside for a single to bring up Salim Malik's 50. It's been a fine innings from him. Played with a lot of common sense. Pakistan need him to stay till the very end if they are to get past this Indian score. Cutting it away. But this could go all the way to the fence and it does. Beating the man there, Venkatesh Prasad, who was a deep extra cover. Well, I did tell you he's been in these precious situations before. He out fought. And outmaneuvered Joshi. Joshi should have followed him, pitched it up more. They bought a normal length with Salim Malik backing away. He could crash it through square point. Better ball. Square on the leg side. If he's going to sweep it, it'll go square. See? That, that has gone behind now sometimes he paddles it steady like that sometimes he hits it hard when he hits it hard it'll go square that's why it's so important that you bowl full because that won't allow him to hit it too hard you have to paddle it that's exactly what joshi did on that last occasion because if he bowls the length behind didn't he ravi and he's going to get it square this is a man out here don't want to get him too far at mid wicket i don't think 
That's right. Enjoy. If he does bowl a length to Malik, that's where the ball will go. To that man uh, square at deep mid wicket. But now he's got Satlain Mustaf on strike. So what will the young man do? Four needed of five balls. And it's four needed of four balls now. The tension mounting. Everyone feeling the pressure. This is where you want 15 fielders, isn't it? <laughs> when you're bowling. He's played away on the offside for a single. That'll give Malik the strike. This is a typical India-Pakistan game. Going right down to the wire. Three runs required of three balls. Make sure you get two. Well, that's what I would be thinking. We get a tie out of it. Then I'll play for the win. Don't get out before I get two runs. I'll be saying if I was selling Malik. Will he wait for the end? Will he do something with this delivery? That's well bowled by Joshi. Malik had given himself room. He's asking for the white. Good decision by Empire David Orchard. He went a long way down leg side, didn't he? He didn't just go a little bit to give himself room. He went too far. And then he really couldn't reach the ball when it spun. Three runs required, two balls to go. Is that pressure or what? Again giving himself room and again hit in the air and he's found the gap. This could finish the match. It's gone in the gap for four. Salim Malik has done it for Pakistan. He's done it on numerous occasions and this just is another one.